and amen. Without him, I would be nothing. Praise the Lord. Without him, I would be drifting. Just like a ship without a sail. <laughs> my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, a ship without a sail. Just imagine that. A ship on the water without direction, without a compass, not knowing where they're going, north, south, east, or west. Oh, praise the Lord. That's what we would be without Jesus. We would be nothing, absolutely nothing. But praise the name of Jesus. But with Jesus. Oh, with Jesus. Hallelujah. How lost. Brethren, how lost would we be without Jesus? How lost? Without Jesus. Um, if someone has lost their way, they, they may not even know that they are lost. They are on a road. And they don't know where they are. But they are driving. They are moving. They are going out forward. It's only when they stop and look around and maybe they may realize that they are going in the wrong direction that they can realize I was lost. Because sometimes north look like south and east look like west. Praise the Lord. But with Jesus, he's a compass and he's got a direction for us. And he points us to this way. This is the way the Bible says. You will heal behind you, the word of God says. A word in your ear said, this is the way. Walk in it. Hallelujah. Without the word of God, we have no direction, my brethren. So we have to appreciate God. And bless you, my brethren, who are here today to acknowledge God and to thank him and to praise him and to glorify him. It's all about Jesus. It's all about giving thanks and giving praise for all that he has done. Praise the Lord Jesus. So we appreciate the Lord for all that he has done for us. I would like to look at this word of God, praise the Lord, which is written to us um, by Peter. Peter the Apostle, who God called him, the Lord Jesus called him, it was fishing for fish. But Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishes of men. Hallelujah. And there was James and John and Zebedee. Praise the Lord Jesus. God called them, follow me. Praise the Lord. And that same God that called those men in those 2,000 years ago is calling us today to follow me. Hallelujah. And I will make you fishes of men. Hallelujah. It is more important, brethren, to fish for men than to fish for fish. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Peter... Before he was saved, uh, before God filled him with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, he was a very timid man. Praise the Lord. And he was not emboldened until that day in the upper room when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, when the anointing, they were in one place and one accord. And the Bible says there came a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And fill the house where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. A hundred and twenty of them I believed. Was there waiting upon the promise. Hallelujah. That Jesus promised. He said I go. But I, the, I will send the comforter. Which is the Holy Ghost. It will come in my name. Hallelujah. So the Holy Ghost came in the name of Jesus. Thank you. So when Peter was emboldened, God in, emboldened Peter on the day of Pentecost, he lose all that timidity and all the fear and doubt went away because he had the power of God abiding with him. And he's writing to write in this epistle in 1 Peter. He says 
in verse 5, we, it doesn't say we, but who are kept, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So, brethren, this is us. We are kept by the power of God through faith. That's how we are kept. The power of God and is keeping us. Praise the Lord. Don't you know the Lord is keeping you? If you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, why don't you sing and shout? Don't, brethren, saints of God, don't hold your head down. Hold your head up. You're serving God. You're serving a risen Savior. You're serving Him who has power over death and the grave. Hallelujah. And we keep us. The power of God keep us. That's what the Bible says, through faith. Because we believe. Because we hold on to Him. Because we trust in Him. Because we lean on Him. Because we stand on the solid rock, which is Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. And verse 6, it says, Wherein we greatly rejoice. A brethren, children of God, there has to be a joy inside. It doesn't matter what is going on around us. Don't worry about all this um, coronavirus, Black Lives Matters, and all those things. Keep your eyes on Jesus. We greatly rejoice. It's not a small joy that God gives us. It is not a small peace that God gives us. It's a peace that passes all understanding. Human being cannot understand why everything is going around us, the world is falling apart. Obviously we can see the world is falling apart. But yet we are smiling. Because there's something on the inside that God gives us that says, fear not. I am with you. The storms are raging. The billows are tossed in high. But I'm with you. And when we have this blessed assurance, we rejoice greatly. I'm not talking about no small, small rejoicing. It says we greatly rejoice. We have something on the inside bubbling up. Amen. We have something on the inside. We greatly rejoice. Though, it says, now for a season. And look at that. If, if need be, ye are in heaviness through the manifold temptations. What are these manifold temptations? What are the situation that we are facing today, my brethren? When they're telling us about mandatory vaccine, when they're telling us about coronavirus and these other things and rioting and everything and there's confusion and there's chaos and we don't even know who to trust. We don't know who to believe, but we know that the Lord's word stands. So now, for a season, brethren, we have to realize everything has a season. The Bible tells us there's a season for everything. This is a season for us to be, there's a season of us to be together, and there's a season for us to be separate. And now we find a season that we're not together as brethren gathering together in the house of God, but we are separate. It is for a season. And this season brings us into heaviness and uncertainty. And it's called manif manifold temptation, doubt, and fear. 
want to set in. Because the devil knows that when he scatters the sheep, you know, in, 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 in the true life, if the bear gets a chance to scatter the sheep, he has more chance to kill them one by one. So this is what David, the devil's plan. And we have to see what's going on through a spiritual eye. The devil scatters us because he thinks scattering us, he can pick us off one by one. He can break us down one by one. Praise the Lord. But brethren, when we're rooted and grounded, praise the name of Jesus, when we're rooted and grounded, the devil can't touch us. When we're under the blood of Jesus, the devil can't touch us, he can't brush us. Amen. Because we are in Jesus. Hallelujah. Brethren, what a blessing. What a blessing. So in verse 7 it says that the trial. Now look at this. The trial of your faith. Being more precious than of gold that perish it. So look at that. We in earthen vessel have something that is more precious than gold. And that is the faith that we have in Jesus. Sometimes we don't see things. We don't see the manifestation of God. We don't see, we don't feel the presence of God, but He's there. Sometimes we don't hear the voice, but He's there. Praise the name of Jesus. Our faith is trusting in the Lord, knowing that nothing matters. Nothing should distract us from praising the Lord. And we have a privilege that God has given us that no man can take away. They can separate us, but they can't stop us from praising Him. We are the church of the living God. And the gates of hell shall never prevail. So we are here today, standing on the promises of God. Standing on His word. Trusting in Him. You know, Daniel in the lion's den was by himself. But he was, he was rooted. He was grounded. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And he was not fearful of his demise or whatever may have happened to him. He was not fearful. He said, I, I will pray. Brethren, nothing can stop us from praying. Nothing can stop us from praising the Lord. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And the praying and the praising the Lord connects, connect us to God. So we stay connected. You know, if we are connected, <laughs> everything is all right. Songwriter says, it's all right as long as I have my Lord beside me. It's all right. As long as I have his hand to hold. As long as he watches over my soul. As long as I'm under his control. It's all right. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, our trial of our faith is more precious than gold. So, we don't need gold. Because we have something more precious than gold. Amen. By the word of the Lord. And though it be tried by fire. Verse 7. It continues. Though it be tried by fire. Our faith. Is going to be tried by fire. Daniel's faith was tried by fire. The three Hebrew boys. Their faith was tried by fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But fire cannot destroy the faith. No matter how the fire hot. If it even seven times heated above what is supposed to be heated. It cannot, cannot, cannot overcome our faith. Might be found unto praise and honor and glory. At the praise of the appearing of God. So you know what? Our faith might be found unto the praise and the honor and the glory unto the appearing of the Lord. 
and brethren, if we know what is going on, they know the Lord is ready to appear. There's all sorts of things going on in the world today, which is total chaos. Everywhere you go, there's chaos. Nobody really knows. Nobody has an answer. Politicians, leaders, presidents, nobody has the answer. But you know what? Jesus is the answer. And verse 8, um, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8, it says, Of whom, having seen, he love, in whom, though we though now we see him not, yet believing, he rejoice in joy unspeakable and full of glory. I don't know. I, I love to gather together. Of, you know, everyone who knows me, I know that I love to be in church. I don't miss church for fun. It has to be very some serious before I miss church. I've always tried to be in church because I love the gathering together. I love the gathering together of the saints of God and I love to see people praise God and glorify God and I love to feel the spirit of the unity and the love of God flowing in the hearts of men. I love that. But it says... Whom have we not seen, yet love? We have not seen Jesus with our eyes, but we love him. We have not touched him like Thomas touched his womb in his, in his, in his side. And in, it didn't touch, we haven't touched his wound or in his hand. We haven't touched those wounds, but we love him. Though now we see him not, we don't see him. Yet believing, he rejoice, we rejoice in joy unspeakable and full of glory. How wonderful. How blessed we are, brethren. How blessed we are. Because we have not seen him, we have not touched him. We haven't, we haven't, we haven't had physical contact with him. But yet we love him. We trust him. We, 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 we rely on him and he knows it yet rejoicing with joy unspeakable and full of glory receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul <laughs> oh praise the Lord Bridget, you know the word of God is deep when we look into the word of God it's deep receiving the end of your faith so your faith, brethren, has an end. There will be a time when we don't need faith. Faith is only taking us on our journey. Faith is a vehicle that takes us to our journey, our home. Amen, praise the Lord. Because faith shall cease. We will receive at the end of our faith even a salvation of our soul. Oh, praise the Lord. Brethren, continue to be faithful. Praising the Lord. Glorifying Him. Hallelujah. Lifting Him up. Despite everything that's going on around you. Don't worry about distractions. Praise the Lord. Look to Jesus. And in verse, in verse 10 it says, Of which salvation the prophets have in, inquired and searched diligently. Who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Brethren, we are blessed. So, if we are blessed, brethren, we must have joy unspeakable. If we realize how God has blessed us, we should have joy unspeakable. And it says the prophets... Have inquired. Prophet like Isaiah. Prophet like Jeremiah. Prophet like Ezekiel. They inquire. And they search diligently. Very carefully. And they prophesied of the grace that it should come. This is the blessings my brethren. This is the blessings that God has bestowed upon us. 
This is the manifold blessings that God has bestowed upon us that the prophet have inquired and searched diligently. And they prophesied of this grace. But they did not see this grace. But they prophesied of it. That should come unto us. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. It is awesome when we think about the blessings and the goodness of the Lord. And what he has done for us. Look what the Lord has done. We are blessed. And when we realize our blessing, you see, we, we don't know what we have. We, sometimes we have something and we don't know the value of what we have. And when we don't realize the value of what we have, we don't, we take, we, I'm not saying that we do, but some people take what they have for granted. You know, you some people born with a silver spoon and they have everything they want and they say, oh, this is the life. Oh, uh, they, they don't realize the gift of God and our blessings, brethren, that God has bestowed upon us. And it says they were searching diligently. Searching what manner, verse 11, of time. What manner of time? The Spirit of Christ, which is in, which in them did signify. When it testified beforehand of the suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow. The suffering of Christ we have seen. The suffering of Christ. But we haven't seen the glory. That should follow. We wait diligently for the glory. Hallelujah. That should follow. Because eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It has not revealed unto the hearts of men. Praise the Lord. The things that God had prepared for them that love him. You know brethren. Sometimes we must think more about heaven and earth. The Bible says, if you be risen with Christ, set your affection on things above. That's where we our affection should be set upon things above. Because that's where we're going. You know, when I, when I look back on life and see so many people that I associated with since I got saved in 1980, and so many people that I rub shoulder with ministers and all and you know uh, friends or what many who most of all and in Christ and I look at them and I turn my back and I look around and Virgin you know what they're gone they're no more and I look at myself and I say look if life continue I'll be gone and I'll be no more and I'll be a distant memory and all of us have an appointment because it's appointed unto man once to die and after the death then comes the judgment. Praise the Lord. So that is part of our walk. It is it's part of our journey to get to Christ. Praise the Lord. What manner of spirit out of matter of time, the Spirit did, 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 did signify when it testified behold on the suffering of Christ and the glory that should be revealed. Unto whom it, is, it was revealed, not, uh, that not unto themselves, but unto us did minister these things, which are now reported unto by you, unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into it's awesome because even the angels in heaven is inquiring and desire to look into what God has given you and I. It is awesome. It is awesome. We are so blessed. Wherefore, verse 13, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. 
and hoped to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashion yourself according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be he holy in all manner of conversation. Praise the Lord. There are conditions, baby brethren, that we have to keep to get to keep close to God and for God to keep close to us. We don't want to be a distance away from God. Like when Jesus when Jesus was arrested and Peter stayed a little far off. He stayed a little distance away because he was fearful. And he was not he did not really have the power that God promised of the Holy Ghost. It had not reached him yet. So he watched from afar off. But we don't need to watch from afar off. He said we need to be he that has called us is holy to be holy in all manner of conversation. So even our conversation has been, has been, has been seasoned with grace. Our conversation, brethren, must be seasoned with love and faith and truth. Praise the Lord Jesus that the love of God may abide in us and through us. And verse 17, it says, If he, be called, if he call on the Father, with that who with, without, without respect of person judgeth every man, every man, he judgeth according to every man's work. And it says, Pass your sojourning here in fear. If we call upon the Lord, our Father, it's Father's Day, praise the Lord, and we give honor to our Father Jesus. If we call upon the Father, who without respect of person, no, God respect no man, but he says, the Bible says, the eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous. So when we fear God, when we love God and fear God, His eyes is upon us. And that shows his, He acknowledges us. So without respect of person, He will judge every man according to every man's work. So we should pass our time of sojourning here. We are passing through, we are sojourning. We are on a journey. This life is a journey. It's not our home. So let not worry too much. Let the world worry about the world. But let us worry about Jesus. Let us, the world, focus about the world. About what's going on. About changes, about this, about laws. About what is changing and what, what people are planning, what government is planning, what this is planning, what that is planning. Let us not be um, encumbered. If the Bible says, uh, the, any man does call it to be a soldier, must not entangle it himself with the affairs of this world, so that we can please him who called us to be a soldier. So we don't want to be entangled too much in the affairs of this world. We can observe, but let's not be entangled too much. For the Bible says again, we are, not, we are, we are redeemed. For as much as he know that we are not redeemed by corruptible things as silver and gold. From your vain conversation received by the tradition of, from your father, but by the precious blood of Christ a lamb without blemish and without spot our salvation comes from the blood of Jesus our salvation comes from the righteousness of the Lord he was a lamb without spot and any and blemish or any such thing he was sinless 
And because he was sinless, that is how he bought our salvation. So we are blessed by the blood of Jesus. We are not redeemed by corruptible things, by silver and gold. Silver and gold could not buy our salvation. It was the blood of Jesus. Vain conversation. The tradition of our fathers could not buy our salvation. It took the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord, who verily foreordained, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these days, in these times for you. So Jesus was foreordained from the foundation of the world. So from God created Adam and Eve, God had foreordained Jesus because he knew Adam would disobey. He knew Adam would sin. So he made a plan. God had a plan B. And the plan B was that he himself would clothe himself in flesh and come down to earth and to die and to suffer and to die and to redeem us. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, brethren. I just want to say to us, brethren, let us rejoice in joy unspeakable. Let us glorify God because of what he has done. No one else could do it. No other blood. No matter what, it's only the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, brethren, I will encourage us to continue to glorify God. And I will say that we must keep our eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on the prize. He's coming back again. Everything that God said in his word is fulfilled. And he said, I'm gone. He said, in my father's house there are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. My brethren, there's a mansion waiting for you. There's a mansion waiting for us. There's something waiting for us, brethren. We just got to hold on to faith. We just have to be steadfast. We just have to be unmov unmovable. Always abounding in the works of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And remember... It is joy unspeakable. That is a weakness we have. We are joy unspeakable. Joy unspeakable is the presence of God in our life. That we don't walk around with fearful. I mean, I can't start telling you about things that are happening in the world. I mean, many of you may have seen and know what's going on around us. There's so much you can't, you can't, you could start from here and you don't know when you finish to talk about what's happening in the world today. The world is totally in chaos. Nobody knows what is, what is happening. Nobody knows who is doing what. Nobody's known what is hold tomorrow, but we know who holds tomorrow. And we know he holds our hands. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. I'd just like to close in a prayer of um, thanks and praise to God and asking God to bless us continually and keeping us steadfast, rooted and grounded in the works of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we give you thanks. Father, we praise you. Father, we glorify you. Father, we magnify your wonderful name. We thank you, Lord, from the depths of our heart for the love that you have bestowed upon us, for your grace that you've bestowed upon us, for your mercies that you've bestowed upon us, for the faith that you have given us. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We acknowledge you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, at this moment that you bless every one of the brethren, those who are connected now in this teleconference and those who are absent. Lord, we are asking you to bless everyone, our pastor, Sister Scott, Sister Ivan, and all the other ministers of Blanche, and everyone, oh God, and every one of your children, 
children. Everyone noted here, Lord, who are present with us today. Lord, we thank you for them, Lord. We pray that you continue to unify us, Lord. We thank you for your grace and your mercies and your love. We thank you for your guidance and protection. We thank you for keeping us, Lord, and every one of your your children, Lord. We pray that you keep us in perfect peace because your word said you keep us in perfect peace who minds stayed on thee lord we pray for our loved ones we pray for our families lord who have not known you who have not accepted you lord jesus we pray for them lord that you will touch them we pray for them that you guide and protect them we pray that lord jesus your hand will be upon them and that you reveal yourself unto them and those lord god out there strain wondering i pray you will give them a light of hope, my God. Those that rule of our, upon us, the prime ministers, the ministers, and everyone, Lord God, we pray that you will direct them and help them, Lord, to seek your face, hallelujah, and to serve you, and that justice may be served. And those that are demonstrating, and hallelujah, and having demonstration, Lord God, we pray you will have mercy upon them. We pray that justice may be done. We pray that justice may be see, seen. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, and we bless you for everything that you have done for us. We praise you for what you are doing for us, and we pray, praise you for what you are about to do. Bless us, keep us, guide and protect us, and we ask these and other blessings in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 The good Lord bless you, my brethren. I close with the grace. May the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the full fellowship of the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen.